The information in this video is provided for informational and educational purposes only. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Morale Monologue. My name is Michael Morale. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you about Spinraza, and I'm also going to be talking to you about Evrisdi, which most of you know as Rizdaplan, which was recently passed by the FDA on Friday, August the 7th, to become the second FDA-approved treatment for those of us with SMA that target the SMN2 gene. And while both Rizdaplan and Spinraza both affect the SMN2 gene, they do so in a different way. And I'm going to explain these differences, which then you can talk to your doctors and your family and friends about to see which treatment may be best for you. And I think you'll see the differences between these two treatments is quite significant. But before I do that, please take a moment and listen to a word from our sponsor, and then I'll come back and we'll start the video. Thank you. This vlog is made possible by a sponsorship from Genentech. Are you living with SMA or are you a caregiver for someone who is? A new treatment has just been FDA approved based on studies of different types of people living with SMA. Genentech extends a special thanks to all of the individuals, families, and healthcare providers who participated in the studies that led to making this new treatment option a reality. To learn more about this new treatment, visit approvedforsma.com. Okay, so let's get started by talking about Spinraza and how it works. What I want you to do is I want you to think of a 10-word sentence. And in that 10-word sentence, if you read those words in sequential order, the sentence makes sense. But if you remove the seventh word out of that sentence, and I'll explain the significance of the seventh word in just a minute, but if you remove that seventh word out of that 10 word sentence, the sentence becomes incomplete. Okay, now think about SMN2. What it does is SMN2 is the gene that those of us with SMA have to rely on because our SMN1 gene is either missing or deficient. And it's the SMN1 gene that gives able-bodied individuals the ability to stand up, walk, build muscle, and to live what they consider a functional life. But since we're missing that, we have to rely on the SMN2 gene. The problem with the SMN2 gene is it only produces about 10 to 15% of the protein that the SMN1 gene produces. And now, I'm sure a lot of you have been asked the question, uh, how many copies of the SMN2 gene do you have? We all have different amounts or different levels of the copies of the SMN2 gene in our bodies. The more copies of the SMN2 gene that you have, the better off you are because it's producing more protein. Now, think about that seventh word that I told you about in that 10 word sentence. In SMN2, your body is trying to produce a protein. And in that protein, there are items called exons, not E-X-X-O-N, like the company Exxon, but E-X-O-N. And like the 10 word sentence, it's got different levels or different numbers of these exons that make up the protein. Now, if you remove the exon seven, which is the seventh exon in that protein string, that protein becomes unrecognizable by the body. So what Spinraza does is it goes back in and it rebinds the exon seven protein back in to that string, making it a fully functional SMN protein. Okay, so that's the easiest way to remember how Spinraza works. It rebinds the exon seven so that that protein becomes functional and our body can recognize it. Now, all of us that receive Spinraza do so by an intrathecal injection, whether it be in your back, on your side, or in your neck, called a cervical injection. And these intrathecal injections target the central nervous system. You have cerebral spinal fluid, which surrounds your spinal cord and your brain. And they have to get the injection into that cerebral spinal fluid so that it can pass through what they call the blood-brain barrier. And the blood-brain barrier is just a system that keeps, I guess, the bad stuff from reaching your spinal cord and your brain. But if they were to give us Spinraza intravenously, it wouldn't pass through the blood-brain barrier. That's the reason why they give Spinraza 
as an intrathecal injection. So that's Spinraza in a nutshell. And again, I could get really technical with this, but just remember the whole issue behind Spinraza and the intrathecal injection is because if it was given intravenously, it would never do any good because it wouldn't pass through that blood-brain barrier. Now, let me explain a little bit about a RISD and how it works. We know that Spinraza can't pass through the blood-brain barrier if it's given intravenously. That's why it's given intrathecally, so doctors can target the cerebral spinal fluid in our spinal columns. Evrisd differs because it's considered a small molecule, and by being a small molecule, it's able to pass through the blood-brain barrier without any problems. You know, there's a lot of people that took Spinraza and that were happy with it, but then there were also a lot of people who were unable to take Spinraza due to either their spinal fusions or some other medical conditions that kept doctors from gaining access to their spinal columns because they couldn't find an opening to inject the uh, Spinraza treatment into the cerebral spinal fluid. But since Evrisd is a small molecule and can pass through the blood-brain barrier, this is gonna open the doors for everybody. Now, I'm not recommending one over the other because this is something that you're really gonna need to talk to your doctors about to determine which treatment is gonna be best for you. But remember, Evrisd can also be administered through a G-tube if you don't have the ability to swallow. So again, Evrisd is gonna open the door for everybody to be on a treatment, whereas some people with Spinraza weren't able to take it. So again, there are some significant differences between these two treatments, but they both do about the same thing. They just go about it in a different way. Now, the company that I work for, SMA News Today, published a great article that I'm getting this information from. And I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video so that you can open this document and read the entire thing for yourself. I didn't wanna read it to you because it gets very technical, but again, this is something that you can show your doctors and your family and friends and determine which treatment is gonna be best for you. So, that's Evrisd in a nutshell. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Morale and Monologue. If you did, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to the SMA News Today YouTube channel as well. We would greatly appreciate it. Remember, when you do subscribe to the channel, don't forget to click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new videos that we produce. We at SMA News Today hope all of you have had a fantastic week. Do me a favor, this upcoming week, do something for yourself that's going to make you a better person. Until next time, take care of yourself, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.